Hi guys and welcome along. I'm so excited to start a month of autumnal goodies. We're going to paint all of my favourite things. Uh, this is my favourite season I think, um, although I think I say that every time a new season comes around. Anyway, today we're going to start with an absolute classic, autumn leaves and a few little conkers and acorns to go with them. So grab your paints and let's get started. Okay, so let's just get straight on with it. So we're going to start with a sort of maple leaf and I've done a pencil line for where the central line of the leaf is, which also acts as the stem. And then from that base point, I'm going to do two lines that come up there and then two more that come off the side. And that is going to create our leaf shape and we're just going to get on with the painting. Now, for those of you who've sort of followed my uh, tutorials for a while, you'll know that there were some sort of simple leaf tutorials right back at the beginning, and those would probably be really useful to go and have another look at if you've not seen those already, because they just give you really good fundamentals of leaf painting and these are sort of developments on that so I've got myself some sort of rather sort of um, warm cadmium yellow which is just mixing with a few of the warmer tones I had in my palette and it's quite uh, wet and I've got my size 6 brush and I'm going to start off just by creating the central section of this maple leaf and bring it down into the middle and then I'm going to pick up some cadmium orange and just redo that top line. I'm going to work fairly fast here because I want to get a nice blend. So moving down into the next section of leaf And then just doing the outline again with the cadmium orange. Now my paint is wet but it's not so soaking wet that I'm puddling the paint. It's still nicely sort of controlled and that's because I'm just blotting my brush off each time and then we fill in this and we just sort of curve the line back out and that's the really really simple way of creating a sort of fail safe autumn maple leaf and it's quite cool with those last ones you can really sort of go to town with the orange And the orange outline also helps you just sort of crisp up those edges. And now I've got this lovely kind of burgundy colour, which I absolutely love, which I'm just going to dab at the base there and then use as my uh, stem down there. Now I'm going to let that dry and move on to the next one and then we're going to add a few more leaf lines and actually make use of these uh, pencil lines that I've done. So next, moving on, we're going to do an oak leaf but we're also going to do a little acorn. So first off, as always, we start with central line of the leaf and then just a little stem and I'm going to put some acorns on now to draw an acorn. We want a first a cup shape, curve that over, and then a sort of longer curve. We've got two. Lovely. Okay, we're going to start off first with our oak leaf. Now I'm going to do a, a range of different 
stages of autumn leaf, I suppose, because of course the beauty of autumn is how we see the colours gradually change from green through to the orange. Now I'm afraid you can't see all the colours of my palette because my page is so big today, but I've got some gold green and I am going to start by sort of creating a nice sort of bulbous top to this leaf and then I am going to just continue down the side All with this wetness It's always great if you can get your hands on the real thing because there is really no substitute. So get yourself out on a nice autumnal walk and see what you can find. Okay, so I'm now going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to the edges fairly quickly whilst it's still wet and just allowing it to blend right in. Just allow that to do its thing. Don't overcomplicate it. And whilst that is drying, let's get on with our acorns. So I've got a size two brush now. And I'm going to go back in to my uh, burnt sienna. And I'm going to just use it in a slightly more concentrated manner. create a little stem. Now if you saw my lemon orange tutorials from last week you'll have seen me doing a little stem with bits of unpainted stalk and that is a lovely little way of just getting a little bit more depth into a sort of seemingly quite boring stem or stalk. Just got a little bit of Mars Black just to a bit more interest there. Now we're going to start off with the sort of elongated curve of the acorn. I love autumn painting because usually I can use up the sort of dregs in my palette. Okay so I've got um, like a sort of faint warm colour and what I'm going to do is just use my brush to curve down, take the fluff off it, So I'm just allowing for the tiniest little lines and then I'd also like to drop in a tiny bit of that gold green. So we'll repeat that on this one. Now we're going to let that one dry as well before we go back in and do the detail and the top cups. Next we're going to do a sort of conquer and a, a leaf to go with that one as well. So let's draw our central, central line and then rather similarly to the maple leaf I'm going to do a curve to lines coming off like that and then two more that are going to come a bit lower than the curve this time and let's get some sap green this time so this is a serrated edge leaf sort of horse chestnut what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create the leaf shape fairly quickly so it's like a big teardrop
And then whilst that is still wet, I'm going to use the point of my brush to create a serrated edge. Really, really simple, but so effective. And this only works if your leaf is wet enough to take on the blended edge. And I look at that in my serrated edged leaf tutorial, which you can have a look at. And I'm just going to drop a bit of sap green down in there because the green's always fighting to get out in autumn, I find. Okay, let's do the second shape. And get the, odd, the orange. So I'm using quite a quite a concentrate but wet cadmium orange to create these serrated edges oh, one side's always much easier than the other isn't it and let's do this one along the bottom continue and repeat on the other side. So as long as you've given yourself just a slither of space between your leaves you'll be able to achieve this lovely shape. I'm gonna try coming up from the bottom this time. Yeah, it still works. And last one. Brilliant. And then the last thing to do is a stem, which I'm going to do in sap green. And that's looking nice. So to accompany our leaf, we need a conker. And you could just go freehand, or if you want to draw one, uh, conkers are a big feature of my childhood. Now that's really, really faint, but it's more so I can just get the paler center in, but I'm actually gonna fill in the whole shape. But I'm gonna leave a little bit of shine over here. And then the other version of course is one that's got its spiky shell still on so it's a slightly funny squashed circle shape and then let's do just a little bit of the conker peeking out there and these shapes have got these amazing green spikes so let's first fill this one in in green gold and a bit of sap green around the edge
These aren't shiny, so they don't need a, a full on unpainted shine, but it is nice to put a bit of darkness around the edge. Pop a bit of that conquer color in there. And we'll just let that dry. Right, the last leaf we're gonna do it's just a really simple, well, it's just a simple autumn leaf. It's a little serrated edge leaf um, and it's just a really beautiful color. So we've got our central line and this time I'm gonna start with orange. And I'm just gonna take my large brush and fill down one side and then with cadmium red just gonna drop in some colour. We're really gonna go to town with this one so I'm now gonna drop in some some burnt sienna as well. And we're just going to let that all do its thing and then we'll do the other side. blotches the burnt sienna. And then a little bit the Mars black as well just at the tips. The autumn's really taking its hold. Right, we need to let this dry and then we can come back and do detail. Okay, we have got dry leaves now and it's time to do leaf detail. So we're going to start with this one back at the top, the maple leaf, and I'm going to use this lovely burgundy colour, which is a mixture of Prussian blue, cadmium red and alizarin crimson. I've got my pencil lines, which is very helpful, and I am going to start by just of coming down from the edges which might seem like a strange place to start but you will see in a second what I'm doing because we're not really done with the actual coloration yet what I want to do is use these also as little sort of blending out moments as well. So I'm using a size two tenths of a zero brush. And I'm just sort of messing, I guess, messing around a bit with this burgundy color at the top here. And then I'm gonna take an even smaller brush. So leaf lines, it's tricky because um, we don't all have access to like the smallest brushes ever, but um, you don't necessarily need a really tiny one, but you just need one that forms a good fine point and is one that you're happy using, I suppose. So I'm going to, I'll start from this one. Everyone will have their own sort of preference of whether they start from the inside out or the outside in, but I'm going to just very finely, a little bit of Mars Black added to that. And add some very fine, delicate lines at parallel points.
just going to keep going until they're all done. And once all those leaves are done, leaf lines are done, I like to just go over them with a clean wet brush and just sort of blend them into the leaf. Just smooth them down in. Which doesn't look like it's doing a huge amount, but it just softens them a little bit. And makes them feel a bit more at one with the leaf. And there we've got a lovely maple leaf. <laughs> okay, let's move on down to this one. So we've got to finish off our acorn tops. So I've got a mix of some burnt sienna here. And first off, I'm just sort of outlining but then there is a sort of um, textured surface to the acorn cup so I'm just dabbing my brush to finish that off so that we get a few little unpainted bits and then with a little bit of shadow mix just dabbing in around the edge at the top there and that will just help sort of accentuate that and then I do like to just pop in a little bit of shadow there as well. So outline in fairly wet watercolour then clean off the brush, then dab that colour in. And then a little bit of the shadow mix, just around the edges. And then a little bit, just to tie the two in. lovely and then we need to do some leaf lines on this one so I get my small brush again and I'm going to have a mix a shadow mix so we've got a bit of French ultramarine and burnt sienna and here we go up the central line to start off with just adding in a tiny bit more darkness into that so burnt sienna, French ultramarine and if you want a little bit of Mars black in there as well. And there we have a lovely oak leaf. Let's move on to these ones here. So we've still got a bit more to do on these. I'm going to use a sort of very dark, greeny shadowy mix for this one because green is the prominent colour. And let's start with this leaf line down here. So we've got quite a strong green there, which we can draw down the stem just to tie it all in and then I'm going to get my smaller brush get that a little bit wet and pick up some colour and fill in the leaves And then what I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to blend it a little bit at the bottom. Which just makes for a slightly more 
interesting kind of leaf. Just using a wet brush to sort of draw out a little bit of that colour. And it gives the leaf a little bit more shaping. Right, and we'll just do the rest of that. And there we have a lovely finished leaf and now let's get on with our conker. So I've got some burnt sienna and I'm going to just paint in the shape of the conker. And then I'm going to clean my brush off, blot it off and start to draw in the colour. And then with a darker colour, I want to come in around the bottom. And we've got a sort of unpainted bit for shine and that's all cool. But we're going to first focus on really emphasising the dark, the dark side. Because they're real sort of shiny mahogany type things, they're amazing. So that is going to just dry. I'm not going to blend that one in just too much. What I am going to do is I'm going to just do the tiniest bit of blending in around the top just to allow some of that darkness to come in because a conquer top we think of it being all perfect and clear but actually it's got still got a bit of interest in it as well so just using some of the water. There we go. Okay we'll leave that and now we'll look at this one. So these have these lovely little spikes. Which I'm just starting off by doing them by putting down a blob of paint and just flicking the brush away, making a spike. Of course, there are a few behind. And of course, there'll be some spikes that are sort of facing us, so we do little circles for those. And we're going to just refine those a little bit once they've dried but I'm now also just going to blend the base of those slightly and we're just going to start to build up a slightly more interesting surface for the conker shell. Because this is all done in green gold, as it dries, these sort of funny blobby bits that I'm doing, they will sort of start to blend a little bit and just add to the surface of the of the conker shell and then we'll go in with a bit of sap green to really refine those spikes. It's all about building up layers and going slowly. Lovely. Right, let's just go back to this one. Clean wet brush. And I'm just going to slowly draw in 
a bit of that colour leaving us with a lovely shine that just isn't too defined but looking really nice on the inside of here of course we've got our conker so we'll see a bit of it See, you blot your brush off thinking it's clean. It really isn't. <laughs> and then a bit of darkness. And we'll just let that one dry as we finish this last leaf. And then we can do those last little bits. This is looking really lovely. <laughs> Okay, here we go, one more leaf to do. So what I've been doing is I've been making a point of doing the leaf lines in different colors on each one so that it you can just see there are, there are options even with those. So for this last one, I'm gonna use the shadow mix, which is gonna be quite a sort of dark and intense one. So first off, a little stem, and then running up that central pencil line, which was rather useful to have in the first place. And then just don't labour it too much. And then there might be of those the tiniest little bits of extra leaf lines. Ooh, if I can get my brush on them. Oh, and of course, stick my hand in it. sort of add a little bit more of that darkness in the top and bottom a little bit of dabbing of the brush if you feel so inclined lovely okay so the last thing to do is get this spiky conker shell finished and I have just off screen a sap green mix If I just put a little bit of that sap green down the side of each of those spikes, and maybe just pop in a few more. And it starts to make a bit more sense, doesn't it? And you're able to just sort of sharpen the points on those spikes as well. Thank you. 
just going to create a little bit of shade on the little sort of inner skin. Still in a sort of shadowy brown. I always find adding a bit of shadow at the end really makes things pop off the page. And there you have all the autumn leaves you could ever want. That was our first of our month of autumnal watercolour tutorials and uh, I really want to say a big thank you to my patrons for all your support. Um, your support really enables me to make these videos for you all and if you enjoyed the video then hit the like button and of course comment below to let me know what you'd like to see coming up soon and subscribe to make sure you never miss another video. Alright, bye!